Thanks for joining me here at butnowministry.org and today we're going to take another look at more than one gospel. This is part four and today we're going to start off with Max Lucado in the devotional Bible, the New Century Version. Max says in his study Bible, the, the devotional Bible on page 1424 under life lessons, Max says, and I quote, situation. When Paul visited Jerusalem, he explained that God saves Gentiles, too. Later, when Peter showed favoritism to Jews, Paul corrected him. Inspiration. There's a great deal of difference between law and grace. There is no peace until we see the finished work of Jesus Christ, until we can look back at the cross of Christ between us and our sins. Then there is glory for time to come. A great many people seem to forget that the best is before us. The kingdom we are going to inherit is glorious. Our crown is a crown of glory. The city we are going to inhabit is the city of the glorified. Wow. This sounds like St. Augustine, doesn't it? The city of God. So as you can clearly see, Max's take is an allegoric stance, not a Bible-believing stance. Max's take on Galatians is no different than Augustine's book, right? The City of God. Max thinks he's Israel going into a kingdom and clearly rejects Pauline truth. The truth is, the Bible says we are his body headed for heavenly places, not an earthly kingdom. And Jesus is not our king today. He is the head of the body. And by the way, Max has absolutely no comments about Galatians 2.7. Hmm. Too tough to handle, huh? The only comment he has is, is Paul visited Jerusalem. He explained that God saves Gentiles too. And by the way, in the New Century Version, it is said that in Galatians 2 7, that Paul was given the gospel of the Gentiles. It's not even the gospel to the Gentiles, okay? And that is wrong. Paul was given the gospel of the uncircumcision okay big difference there okay and then yes he went to the Gentiles and then he went to the heathen yes but he went to the Jew first okay that's what it says in 1 Corinthians 15 1 through 4 and it also says just do a study on the word first in the Pauline epistles he went to the Jew first okay that uncircumcised Jew is who he went to first so as you can clearly see, right, this is Matt. The kingdom we are going to inherit is glorious. I'm sorry, I'm seated in heavenly places, Max. So Ephesians 1.3, this is what Max rejects. Ephesians 1.3, Blessed be the God of our Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Ephesians 1.20, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Ephesians 2.6, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's where I'm sitting, sitting right now, Max. Ephesians 3.10, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. And we are not to set our affections or even think about anything that pertains to the earth, right? Colossians 3.1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Verse 2. Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth, Max. How about Philippians 3.18-20? through 20? For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So clearly the Bible says that he's an enemy of the cross. He's an enemy of the cross of Christ. He minds earthly things. How about Spiro... Zadi Hadis, I think that's how you say his name. He has the Keyword Study Bible. He was a Greek American Bible scholar. In the NASB Word Study Bible on page 1551 and 1552, 
Spiro has no notes on this verse, Galatians 2.7. Another one. I wonder if it's too controversial. Spiro in the notes, he does have on those pages, Greeks the Bible out of existence. He's clearly not a Bible believer, he's a Greek believer. And we're not having to go there. Like I said, there's nothing, he says nothing about the verse. And then lastly, let's see what we can find in the Catholic commentary on page 100 or 1114 in the Catholic commentary on the Holy Scripture. It says, and I quote, He, Paul, begins explaining in detail how his gospel teaching has always been independent of, though fully in accord with, that of the Twelve. So independent of, though fully in accord with. So let me ask you something. Does that make any sense? It's independent and in accord. So I guess, is not that the same as contrary, meaning the same? Right? Does contrary mean the same? Just like independent means the same? Wow! I like that. That's not what it means. Contrary means it's different. Independent does not mean accord. Uh, it's just absolutely unbelievable. There's two different Gospels. Why can't you believe what God's Word says? Why do you have to, why do you have to make this mess? And what a mess it is, is it not? So again, let's look at Peter's Gospel and Paul's Gospel. Okay, here's Peter's, Acts 2.36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? In verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, was Peter's, was that good news? Was that good news? He pricked them in the hearts. Because he said that they crucified Jesus Christ. Peter was guilting them. So, is that good news? And then what they have to do because of that? They have to repent and be baptized for what? Is it forgiveness of sin? No, for remission of sin. So their sins aren't even forgiven yet. That's the same as Paul's. Let's see what Paul says. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. Verse 2, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Verse 3, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Verse 4, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Wow, I don't see repent in there, I don't see baptized, I don't see remission. I see that Christ died for your sin, and if you believe that, you're saved. Romans 5.10, For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. Wow, I don't see repent and be baptized. How about 2 Corinthians 5.21, For He hath made Him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that He might be made the righteousness of God in Him. So Peter never preached the death, burial, and resurrection, right? And Paul never preached repent and be baptized for remission of sin. Wow, but they're the same. 
So you get it? Two different Gospels, two different dispensations, two different messages, two different ministries, contrary to one another, Galatians 2.7, in your King James Authorized Version, but contrary-wise, when they saw that the Gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the Gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. One last note. In summary, John MacArthur, R.C. Sproul, Max Lucado, and Spiro Zadiades, I'm probably saying it wrong, whatever, all agree with the Roman Catholic text. Now you can spot a liar. Thanks again for joining me through this series, Another Look at More Than One Gospel. I hope this helps you to understand the gospel of the grace of God with clarity that it is without works, it is without works of the law, it is without works of righteousness, it is without boasting, and it is not of yourself. It is a free gift of God. Thanks again for listening. Email me at reckonyourselfdead at gmail.com and subscribe to my channel.